Hello everyone, my name is Pixarifts and welcome back to Skyblock 116. I hope you guys are having a good day and we're back in the Skyblock world with full diamond armor and tools. I've decided to pull this iron sword out of the chest just so I can use it up on the mob farms and various other things around here. And I think today we're really going to put these diamond tools through their paces. I, for a start, want to kick off by gathering a bunch of of resources probably here and maybe even going back to the basalt delta island in the nether and generating some basalt because if you look around we are standing on a bunch of platforms in the sky and one of my early pledges i suppose you'd say with this series is that i wanted the skyblock worlds to look a little bit prettier we've managed to do that with the cobblestone generators around here i really like this little cobblestone alley where i generate a bunch more cobblestone using our piston powered cobble generator but now we have the luxury of using diamond tools a little bit more it's a little bit less labor intensive to gather resources and the rest of these platforms out here in the sky really don't look like much. They're a bunch of cobblestone slabs because they're easy to get, or a bunch of grass because we needed it to spread. There really isn't a whole lot to make this place look nice. So we're going to be doing something about that today, starting, I think, with a path out to that nether portal, because this basalt bridge has been occupying the sky for too long. It's geometric and ugly. I think it's probably best if it goes, and we will end up doing something a little bit more decorative up to the nether portal. I also really want to expand the nether portal, but that involves farming some obsidian, which we might be able to do, but it's a little bit of a tricky process if we want to avoid dying. In my previous Skyblock series, I just mined out the portal in the nether, dropped myself into the void, went back through this portal, and it generated a new portal. But there are, of course, ways of getting more obsidian that don't require you to die. If you wanted to play this map in hardcore mode, for example, you could probably do that. And the game did start us off with 10 obsidian, one of which I ended up using in the cobblestone generator. And now we have a diamond pickaxe. We could, of course, reclaim that. But once you have diamond tools, you can take down a nether portal, build it somewhere else, and that will allow you to generate a portal at a different position in the nether. Your original portal will still be there, so you can use that to transfer back to the overworld, and then take down one or the other of those portals and keep going through them, allowing you to <laughs> basically loop through nether portals infinitely, generating new ones in the nether or the overworld each time, taking them down and repeating the process until you have enough obsidian. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. First thing I want to do is sleep. We'll gather a few more resources from the cobblestone generator, and I think we're going to use those to build a landscape that leads up to the nether portal. And what better way to do that than in the form of a time lapse? <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so while it is looking a little rough, especially from the outside, we now have a terraformed cobblestone and stone path leading up to the nether portal, which means we can finally get rid of this basalt bridge, and I've started to grow a dirt area around the outside here, which is eventually going to fill up with grass and will hopefully provide a nice little scenic road up to the nether portal. But I decided to cut the time lapse short because I'm running out of resources and because we have a visit from the Wandering Trader. I'm fairly certain this is the first time he has shown up in this Skyblock series, and normally an irritation in a default survival world, the Wandering Trader can be a very useful resource in Skyblock. So let's see what he's got on him, and it looks like he is selling jungle saplings, which would be pretty important were it not for the fact that I've already got a fair amount of those. He's selling Podzol, Red Dye, Light Grey Dye, and Orange Tulips. Now unfortunately he's not selling anything that we can't already get by some other means. Obviously red dye is going to be abundant if we bone meal the ground here, likewise light grey dye can be gotten from lots of flowers. The jungle saplings would be kind of nice if it wasn't for the fact that they had five emeralds per sapling here and I've already started farming a few jungle trees as you saw in the time lapse. Once again the orange tulips I'm fairly certain can be found if we just find the right biome and ferns can be grown using bone meal I believe if you're in any kind of spruce tiger style biome or a jungle biome but regardless of that I feel like I might spare a couple of emeralds just to trade a couple of ferns so we've got them because then they can be farmed regardless of the biome they are in. I don't think I have any emeralds down here though so it looks like we might need to go and trade with our villagers a couple of times. And as we go and see that, you can kind of see that, yes, from the side, as you probably saw in segments of the time lapse, it's looking a little bit square from the bottom half. I didn't really bother with any slabs or anything underneath because we can always build a platform underneath that, terraform the underside of it however we want to. Not really a huge concern. What is a concern for me right now is the fact that the iron farm stopped working when I logged into this world, and I think it is mainly because the villagers' AI doesn't really kick in until you are within 32 blocks of the villagers. So they will normally just kind of stand around, and it's only if you get within 32 blocks of them during the night that they will actually bother to sleep in their beds. And sleeping in their beds is the one thing that is required for those three villagers up there to make an iron golem now. So obviously, while we have been getting a little bit of iron since I came down here during the night and realized that, it does mean we'll have to come down here somewhat frequently if we want to make sure those villagers are doing their thing, or at least get within 32 blocks of them. So we might have to figure out some way of making that more convenient a little bit later, whether that's moving the iron farm to a higher location in the world, a place that we are closer to on a more regular basis, or making something a little bit further down here that will bring us within range of the iron farm during the night when those villagers need to be sleeping. But I'm getting all turned around here. I actually wanted to come down here and trade some iron with these folks. And this one is going back to trading us four iron ingots per emerald. The weaponsmith, being one of the villagers we cured, is still at one. So I reckon we can trade off a bunch of those. And we've got 24 emeralds to spend. I would like to buy a few more lanterns since we are decorating the path with those. And that'll take the librarian up to the next level where we start getting clocks and compasses and that kind of stuff. Nothing super interesting, but... At the end of this, hopefully we will end up with name tags as a master level trade. Doesn't look like we're going to get another book from you, but we need to recruit some more librarians at some point anyway. And it seems like a bit of a waste to avoid using the Wandering Trader while he is here, so sure, I'll go ahead and buy some ferns. Emeralds are basically free at this point now that we're farming iron, so I'm not too worried about spending them on frivolous stuff like that. And if we bone meal the ferns to grow them to two block tall ferns, then we can shear them and get twice the ferns back out of that. So that is a renewable fern farm nice and easily. Now, of course, the last thing we're going to do with the Wandering Trader, despite the fact that his llamas are probably going to attack me for it, is kill him because of the leads he will drop. And leads at this stage, when we don't have a slime farm yet, are actually kind of a precious resource. So I'm sorry, my friend, but you are going to go on a bit of a trip here. And there we go, the llamas' leads have broken. We got one little bit of leather from the llama, and we got that second lead there as well. Great stuff. Okay, so we can stash those in a chest, and that will allow us to drag around some of the leashable animals in the world should we need to. And hopefully future traders won't be deterred by my lack of hospitality towards them, and they'll come back a little bit later so that we can get a few more precious resources from them. But this is looking great so far. I'm liking the fact that we can 
use lanterns thanks to the fact that they are tradable from librarians. One of the other things I want to get librarians trading me is glass because we could build another husk farm out there underneath the desert island but that is a slow and AFK process and I have a feeling it will be a lot nicer if we can just trade the glass from librarians and that way we can reserve sand for occasional things like the making of concrete powder and occasionally TNT. But at long last it is time to remove this basalt bridge from its position up here in the sky. I might head through to the nether and farm a little bit more basalt so we can decorate the outside of this nether portal but I'm a lot happier now that we're finally removing this and making way for some prettier looking pathways around here. So with that done and a little bit more dirt put in around the path here I actually want to start working on getting something renewable that we haven't been able to get in previous versions of this skyblock map and it's all thanks to another custom crafting recipe that we're able to get hold of it this time. Where did I put all of the red weeping vines there we go great we've got some in here so in a 2x2 crafting interface four weeping vines will now make one block of netherrack thanks as i mentioned to one of the custom crafting recipes that have been added in this skyblock map and the main reason for that is because we need to be able to reproduce nylium nylium of course will only propagate when it is bone mealed next to netherrack or when the netherrack next to a block of nylium is bone mealed more accurately so what we're gonna have to do is get a significant amount of netherrack if we want to expand our warped and crimson growing operation and so for that that looks like all the bone mealing i can do it's amazing how little ground clearance these blocks actually have what I want to do is set up a semi-automatic farm that's going to allow me to shear a whole bunch of these weeping vines. And now that we have access to redstone components, it's going to be relatively easy to do that. So I think I need one nether quartz and two redstone dust plus a bunch of cobblestone. And that is the ingredients of an observer. Great. I can never remember which way around the quartz and redstone dust are, if it's two of one or one of the other or vice versa. But we have an observer now. We also need to make a dispenser, which should be possible to do with one of these bows that I've been getting from the mob spawner and a single piece of redstone. There we go, we got a dispenser as well. And what I am counting on here is the idea that the dispenser can actually have the weeping vines dangling from it and we'll still be able to operate using bone meal. So we're going to make a little bit of a cobblestone tower over here on top of my tree farming effort here and we're going to have a go at setting up an automated weeping vine farm. So we're going to set our dispenser maybe uh, you know eight to ten blocks off the ground here and we're going to fill that up with bone meal. This is the first test. Can we? Of course we can. Attach weeping vines to the underside of that. Next up I will need some kind of redstone component. Let's use a lever for now. Attach that to the side and yes it bone meals and every time you use bone meal on some of this stuff it doesn't just grow one block it grows multiple blocks now the difference between using shears and just punching this is that with shears you will get every single block of the weeping vines whereas if you just punch it you only get one or two as you can see there we had maybe like five or six blocks of growth of the weeping vine and we only got a couple so I think the most important thing here is going to be to use shears every time. And if I stand below this, let's say if I stand about here, I'm not quite reaching all the way to the top of this column of weeping vines, but I think I would cut off all but the first couple of blocks worth there. So either we can have me standing on a block here, in which case I still don't think I can quite reach the top of that, but I should be able to reach the block underneath. There we go or we can stand on the ground and do something similar. But what I'm thinking we do is we place an observer here. And this is gonna have a couple of effects once we do this because the observer is gonna be triggered by the vines growing down in front of it. That's going to mean that the dispenser ends up getting bone meal a couple of times, meaning we should hopefully end up growing this stuff to its maximum length. All of the scaffolding stuff is very temporary. You can just ignore this for now. So what's going to happen is this dispenser will output bone meal to these weeping vines thanks to the output from this observer and it's going to get bone mealed very quickly again. All we should need to do actually is put a redstone dust there and a dust there and we should get this to work. So instead of just explaining it to you verbally, I may as well actually go and <laughs> try it out. So with the redstone dust there and there leading into that dispenser, basically every time something happens to trigger this observer, it should end up bone mealing the weeping vines here. Yes, there we go. And that will ensure that the weeping vines end up growing down to their full length. Now, if we come down here 
and we just leave one block at the bottom there so we'll end up just with a single block to stand on if I end up shearing all of these upwards like so yes there we go it grows again and it grows twice thanks to the fact that the observer there is ticking the dispenser twice. It's kind of sending a redstone pulse to the dispenser multiple times because of losing the weeping vine in front of it and then gaining a weeping vine in front of it with that first round of bone meal. So if I stand underneath here and just continue left clicking with shears, we actually get a pretty significant amount of weeping vines pretty quickly. So yeah, we end up with, as long as you are standing underneath it, a pretty easy left trigger capable AFK farm that is going to provide you with a lot of weeping vines unlike a piston breaking setup which is just going to provide you with occasional weeping vines which could be farmed in the background but that's also going to waste a lot of bone meal and so I've used that until I've more or less run out of sheer durability only a little bit left and we have enough weeping vines to make close to a stack of netherrack three quarters of a stack is pretty good going as far as I'm concerned and I think we can use that to decorate the portal a little bit more. A lot of people like to decorate their nether portals as though the nether is slowly creeping into the overworld. And I kind of like that as a theme, considering that the nether is actually of more importance here in this particular skyblock pack. So we can decorate the outside of the portal here with a little bit of extra netherrack to give it that nether flavor. But one of the major things I want to do with this, as I said before, is go into the nether and end up using this netherrack to propagate a little bit more nylium so that we can expand our warped and crimson farming operation. We don't have a silk touch tool yet, so we're not able to bring any of that nylium back to the overworld for farming, but we can definitely keep it inside the nether and do a whole lot with it. So it's time to head back through to the nether. I'm going to have to swap out for my gold helmet, of course, and once we step through here, we should be able to make our way out to some of those extra islands that are out there. And I brought enough weeping vines for two whole stacks of netherrack, meaning that we can add a stack to one island and a stack to the other, and we should be good to go. Heading east from the portal, we find our warped island there in this purple foggy biome, and I'm just going to expand the netherrack around the outside here a little bit. We're kind of ruining the shape of the island for now, but we can always do a lot more with this later if we want to. I just want to add a little bit more netherrack to around the outside and turn this into a slightly more organic and nether-like looking landmass. With the netherrack placed in and just a little bit of bone meal, there we go, we can finally expand that nylium. And I'm going to pop down a couple of torches here just so we don't get as many enderman spawns over here. But that's all we should need to worry about in this warped forest biome. The crimson forest, on the other hand, is going to be a bit more of a problem. While I'm here, though, I've grabbed a sample of the twisting vines because I'm fairly certain we'll be able to make a similar farm to the weeping vine farm just upside down, I guess. In fact, while I'm thinking about that, let me try that now. So I've got a sample of the twisting vines. I've got a dispenser here, which I'm going to throw a little bit of bone meal in. And we're going to plant the twisting vines on top of that. Then we're going to have an observer basically two blocks up. I guess that makes sense. The observer powering this block should hopefully send a signal to this redstone dust down here. And I think that should be everything we need. There we go. Okay, it does work pretty well, actually. Let's see. Okay, 34 twisting vines. Pretty good. I think we'll probably stand on top of the farm next door if we want to harvest these. But yeah, I think that's working out pretty well. And we're getting a decent amount of twisting vines. I wonder if there's a crafting recipe for those. No, it doesn't look like there is. Okay, so just the weeping vines for netherrack. Fair enough. I was hoping that these would make, I don't know, like warped nylium or something like that. So while we probably won't need as many twisting vines as we do the crimson vines, just crouching on top of this netherrack block here and holding down shift is enough to harvest us a whole lot of twisting vines as well. But while we're on a roll, the last thing I want to do is head out here to this crimson forest biome and make a little bit of expansion to this island here. And like I said, I'm going to be a little bit more cautious about how I expand this island and probably put down a few light sources because we are still going to get piglins and hoglins spawning over here. And the hoglins are the ones I'm concerned about the most because they have a tendency to knock you into the sky a little bit and that will eventually lead to me, I'm sure, getting thrown off one of these islands by a hoglin here and there, but we can probably take the string out now, thinking about it, because the vines will just grow down about this far, and if we just propagate this nylium a little further, then I'll feel a little bit more confident in removing some of it later to do some warped and crimson wood farming. 
Now that I really think about it, I'm fairly certain hoglins will also spawn in any light level. So really putting down torches over here is mainly going to be a defense against other hostiles. But I think for now we should be okay just to put down a little bit more of this and then bone meal it to get some more of that crimson nylium. There it is. Great stuff. And now with netherrack production well underway, I think that is probably where we're going to wrap things up for this episode of Skyblock 116. Folks, I do hope you've enjoyed this little look at the progress in the Skyblock world. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.